So my name is uh, Olivier Bonnereau. I'm a postdoctoral uh, researcher and uh, analyze materials from manuscripts and uh, so which are uh, inks, pigments and uh, writing mat uh, supports like uh, paper, parchment, papyrus and I'm mostly uh, analyzing uh, inks. So I, I work at the BAM, so it's a Bundesanstalt für Materialforschung und Prüfung. So, which means that it's it's a federal uh, institute for material uh, research and testing. Uh, it's a very big institute which deals with all kinds of materials, but I work in a small division which deals specifically uh, with materials from uh, cultural heritage uh, artifacts and uh, art artifacts. And I also work for the Center for the Study of Manuscript Cultures, uh, which is part of a, of a cluster of excellence understanding uh, written artifacts uh, from the University of Hamburg. And uh, so uh, together with these two institutions, uh, we uh, analyze mat uh, materials from uh, uh, different uh, written artifacts and mostly manuscripts, and we try to better understand the history of uh, inks in particular. Most of the uh, objects we analyze are uh, very uh, precious and uh, fragile and we cannot, of course, use uh, destructive techniques. So our lab has uh, almost only non-destructive techniques. And in addition, most of the time the objects cannot uh, travel. So we have to go to the different museums and libraries to analyze the objects. And that's why we have mostly portable, at least transportable equipment. So we have uh, multi-spectral imaging. Uh, we have uh, visible uh, spectrophotometry, uh, we have uh, FTIR, we have Raman spectroscopy, we have several uh, microscopy uh, techniques, and we have also uh, several uh, XRF spectrometers uh, so that we can easily adapt uh, depending on the on the question that we, we have on the type of analysis we want to, to do. So we have uh, M6 jet stream when we need to really uh, have a scan of all uh, areas of, uh, of a manuscript and for a very uh, uh, detailed studies. Uh, we have also uh, Artax, we have Elio, and we have uh, also Tracer. So for us, uh, Elio is especially uh, useful when uh, we need to have a very portable machine. We need to uh, travel somewhere, we have a limited amount of time and need to do a lot of uh, analysis in this uh, short time. Uh, so very often uh, I or one of my colleagues uh, can travel uh, alone, take uh, for example a taxi and go to the Egyptian Museum with Elio or uh, uh, take it with a, with a plane, it's just uh, one extra piece of uh, hand luggage and uh, plus one uh, sport bag for the tripod. Uh, and so we used a lot for uh, to, to analyze uh, pigments or uh, inks uh, yeah, when we have this really this need for a uh, very portable uh, equipment and to do a quick uh, survey. So I want to show you one uh, example of my, my work using uh, Elio uh, XRS spectrometer. Uh, so uh, in the summer 2018, I went to uh, the Biblioteca Nazionale di Napoli uh, in Naples to uh, analyze uh, ink from Herculaneum papyri. So as you probably know, uh, in 79, there was uh, an eruption of Mount Vesuvius in the region of Naples and several Roman cities, the most famous of them are uh, Pompeii and Herculaneum, were uh, completely covered by ash. And in uh, Herculaneum, uh, many papyri were discovered, actually a whole library, it's the only library which, uh, from antiquity which survived uh, to us, uh, and the whole library was discovered and uh, more than 1,800 papyrus scrolls were, were found and waiting to, to be uh, enrolled to read the, the text. And uh, immediately after following the discovery in the 18th century, people tried to enroll them using uh, mechanical methods. These were partly successful. Some uh, parts of the text could be recovered, but of course uh, also a, a very, very big part was uh, immediately destroyed. Um, and now we want to have, uh, we don't want to use such methods nowadays, we want to, to preserve the scrolls for the future. And for that, the method of choice is uh, X-ray computed tomography. So um, the idea is that you um, will uh, analyze layers by layers the, the, um, the scrolls. 
the and um, see uh, where what are the difference in um, in uh, absorption of the material. So when you have a denser material, this material will block the X-rays, and then you will have a, a good contrast. The problem is that uh, for uh, an uh, enrolling the Herculaneum scrolls, the uh, burnt uh, papyrus rolls are, are mostly made of carbon, and the ink at that time was mostly made of carbon, so you don't have uh, a good contrast. So I can give you a very small, uh, quick recap on inks. So we have uh, different uh, type of technologies for inks. In antiquities, they used carbon inks. It's just made of carbon pigments with uh, uh, water uh, and the binder. And uh, later in the Middle Ages, uh, the most common inks are uh, made from uh, tannins with iron sulfate and uh, water. You have also plant inks where you have just tannins and, and water. Uh, but we actually uh, di discovered uh, quite recently that they, they were already in antiquities some uh, some metals in the in the carbon, and including in their Herculaneum papyri themselves. So there were examples from uh, uh, fragments which are kept in Paris where people found lead. And then if this is the case, we can uh, read the, the papyri because of course if there is lead in the ink, the material of the ink will be much denser than the papyrus support and then we can achieve good results of tomography. Uh, uh, very recently, uh, an example was uh, people managed to uh, totally uh, virtually unroll a uh, scroll from En Gedi in Israel, but this is a different case because it's uh, parchment, uh, but it, it, it shows that this can be achievable. Um, so we also uh, tried uh, ourselves on some fragments that were uh, uh, very kindly uh, sent to us, and we, we saw that yeah we had sometimes like you can see here uh, a map uh, with uh, imaging XRF with a jet that you have uh, the ink is readable in uh, iron and phosphorus. So with that idea, we tried to uh, analyze uh, a large number of uh, fragments uh, from Herculanum. Uh, which come from uh, partially uh, unrolled uh, uh, scrolls. So they tried with mechanical methods to unroll the scroll, got some fragments, but then they saw that the, the rolls were too fragile and they stopped. Um, so then uh, with this, I can I can see, I can analyze on the fragments uh, if there are any metals in the ink, and then if there is metal, they can be very good candidates for uh, X-ray uh, computer tomography. And so for that, I used uh, Elio because I, I needed to be able to uh, do a lot of, uh, of, of spots on the, each fragment to, to see on, on the difference between the parts with ink and parts without ink, and to, to see if there are any additions of, um, of metals in the, in the ink themselves. And I needed to, to be able to analyze a lot of different fragments. Uh, and so Elio was the perfect uh, uh, machine for that. Um, the challenges, of course, that uh, these fragments, uh, which were uh, recovered a, a long time ago, were then uh, glued uh, on a cardboard. Sometimes there are different layers and not just one layer. So you cannot really check, uh, you cannot be sure of where you have, uh, if you, maybe you have ink, no, no ink on the surface, but then you have ink on the verso on, or uh, on the layers under it. So that's why I needed good statistics. I needed to do a lot of, uh, of spots. Uh, also, the, I could not, the papyri are very, very fragile, the fragments are very fragile, so I could not, uh, I had to move the Helio machine around and not the, uh, the papyrus. And so that's also one of the reasons I needed a very uh, light and portable machine. Uh, the spot size uh, was uh, all right, but yeah, of course, it would have been even better if it was smaller, but this was uh, enough for, for us. Um, and uh, also there is a problem of uh, papyrus, which is uh, has an inhomogeneous uh, composition. But uh, despite all these uh, problems, I get uh, good results. And in some cases, I could see uh, an addition. Um, uh, attribution, I could attribute iron, phosphorus, and lead to the to the ink, uh, especially in Greek fragments, which is very interesting results for us who study the uh, history of inks. And uh, then we could identify very good candidates for computer tomography. Um, so yeah, this is, I think is a nice uh, example of how uh, uh, portable and uh, and uh, easy to use and a quick machine like uh, Helio can be can be used uh, in uh, for these kind of applications.